This is the first Tuxedo Time episode with all these new friends. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Welcome to, this isn't, this is just a normal edition of Tuxedo Time. Tuxedo Time is when we get in our tuxedos, AKA our comfy clothes that don't match. And it is a time. And it's a time we basically sit down, casually have a discussion with you guys, even though it's not live. We encourage you guys to be drinking your coffee or your tea or your late night, whatever, wearing your tuxedo. I reached out to you guys on the community tab, which we have now on YouTube, which I is super what fun. Looks like. It's kind of like Twitter, where we can like Wait. basically have like a direct access to all you guys on YouTube, which is great because I don't know how many of you are following us on Instagram or Twitter. I've never even seen it. I my you changed the password to our account, and now I got logged out, so I haven't been able to log into YouTube. Because I'm gonna change it to just Becky. Um, no. I'm I'm kidding. We just recently surpassed 50k, which is mind-boggling. So we thought we'd do a little 50k Q&A because it rhymes. 50k Q&A. No, I think we're at 51k or something now. Anyway, I asked you guys for questions. You guys delivered. So we're gonna try to answer as many as we can in the special edition of Tuxedo Time, 50k Q&A edition. That's there what was, it's called. That's what it's called. That rhymes. Yeah. Yeah. Question number one. Daniel asked, "Did you ever get into debt because you wanted the best gear or wanted to do a bigger project and bought things and really regret it?" And how did you get out of that situation? And we're very strategic in what we buy. We had a business for a year, so any camera gear we bought was always a business expense, and we'd make sure to uh, depreciate that over five years. Capital cost allowances, I think, is what the Canadian government called them. So if there's something you want that you need for a project, don't put yourself in debt over it. Use what you have, borrow gear, rent gear. Second question, a bite of brownie. I love brownies. It says, do you guys feel added pressure to make more content and stay consistent as your subscriber base skyrockets? Yes, 100%. I feel like the pressure is on, but it's a good pressure. I feel motivated. I'm very excited. Your motivation goes in like, it waxes and wanes. It does, yeah. And this is definitely on a, you know, a crest for sure. Okay, Leo London asks, hey guys, how can I get over being super paranoid about people staring at me when I'm trying to make a video in public? It's still awkward for us to record in public, but you literally have to just not care and just push through. If you just own it, then everyone's gonna be like, oh, that person is just vlogging. Fletcher asks, uh, in Peter McKinnon's video, Chris mentioned that you guys don't monetize your videos because of a clause in Becky's contract. Just wanted to know what sort of work Becky does and why they have to put that clause in. So again, that came up a number of times. Um, it's not actually in my work contract, it's in my actual visa. So I'm Canadian, I'm working in the US, so I have a specific work visa and they require me to only work for that employer. Complete Formula says, how do you make the conversation natural and who decides to cover what? Um, we don't really decide who covers what, it's just kind of like, here's the thing we're gonna talk about and then whoever says it best makes it into the video. That's, that's pretty true. Except for this, basically have a discussion like we would have in our normal day-to-day -day relationship. Yeah. Okay, Victor Vlogs PDX, are you going to set up a PO box so you guys can start doing mail times? We totally should. Yes, eventually we are gonna set up a PO box. I think we're gonna wait till we move out of this place. Justin Henton says, did you guys get married for visa issues? How did that change the branding of your channel or was that always the plan? Our plan was to get married when I finally finished my 14 years of post-secondary training to get where I am. Mm -hmm. I'm an interventional radiologist. For anybody who doesn't know, link up here to another channel where I kind of explain that. We were always getting married when I was finished and we were kind of settling down finally. Uh, it just happened to coincide with the fact that when I finished my training, that's when we took a job down here. So it was just a coincidence that that all happened at the same time. And actually it made it harder for us to move down here for that reason because people would then think we did it for visa issues. Mm -hmm. So we have to prove that, yeah, we've been together for like 16 years since high school. We were planning on switching from our original brand, which was the Uncommon Lot, to Becky and Chris because the trajectory of our content was changing. It was no longer DIY and home renovation. It was more lifestyle. And we thought that our names would be more fitting as a YouTube channel than the Uncommon Lot. Etienne Martin Ouellette. That sounds like French. How do you not lose interest in photo slash video now as your hobby is turning into your job? You said it happened to you before. How is it different with vlogging? Like right now we're not doing any sponsored content or doing any freelance work. The so vlog, it's, it's, it is, but it isn't. I spend most of my time working on this YouTube channel. The only people I have to answer to is me and Chris. It doesn't have to go through an approval process and therefore it's kind of a little, like it's still stressful sometimes, but it's mostly stress-free. Live in the Keys Life asks, if you could go back to the start of your YouTube journey and change one thing, what would it be? <laughs> you know what I would change? I know exactly what you'd change. I would. Roadkill. <laughs> Roadkill CNA. <laughs> I had an existing YouTube channel that had 300 subscribers and I thought, hey, let's start with 300 subscribers versus zero, but it turns out that you can't actually change your URL. You can make it custom URL, but you can never actually change your original one. So- Can't change your original username. 
That's right. Yeah. So username on our channel is RoadkillCNA. Yeah. And we'll leave that story for another day. Opa Greek Taverna says, as a couple, how do you divide workload editing and storyline? Is there any are, is there any arguments or disputes in post? The way we divide labor is she does it all, and then she's like, hey, I got a video for you to see. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. I watch it. I'm like, yeah, it looks great to me. There's she's, five spelling mistakes, and then that's it. Yeah. She feels like she needs my approval on all the videos. Well, you're half the channel. I can't true. just post videos it's, and you'd be like, no, that's true. It's I true. farted in that and you were supposed to take it out because you did make me take out your fart the other day. Probably won't even be able to put this fart in this video. <laughs> Next question. Fart. What is the hardest part of making a video? I think like coming up with the idea is the hardest part. Yeah, making a coherent and Story, yeah. not just a random mishmash of footage from the day. But I, I came from editing BMX videos, which were all montages to music. So I find I, I very easily slump into that style of editing. Making it like interesting with different like highs and lows and combining music, no music, dialogue, just making it like a, a diverse heterogeneous program. That's the hardest thing I find. Okay, stop making fun of me. Next question. Bronson Allen. How do you start to collaborate with other content creators? At what point did you get big enough following to start reaching out to other YouTubers to collab? I think you can collaborate with YouTubers at any size, but I think it's who you're reaching out to. We would always recommend reaching out to people who are a similar size channel as you. It also has to be organic. Yes. It's not just like DMing someone on social media and be like, hey, uh, you want to f feature me in your video? It's genuine interactions you have. You have to develop that relationship, I think, first. I think all of our collabs are all with people who we've gotten to know online first. Naimul Akib says, what made you come into photography and cinema making? I started making BMX videos when I was in grade school. Uh, and I just kept with video after that and did freelance video work uh, when I was in med school to make money. And then I got into photography through that. I started shooting film photography when Chris was into video. And then I got into obviously digital photography and then slowly got into film because of you. Yeah, and we, we switched places. Basically kind of. switched places. You started with photos and then ended up into video and then I started with video and ended up in photos. I didn't like video though until I started doing YouTube. I didn't like doing commercial jobs. Francis Conrad Moraleo says, what keeps you motivated to create each day? I like just love making shit. But then also what motivates the shit out of me is like seeing, yeah, seeing other people like friends just and kill it, like opening their own businesses, starting a new product line, killing it on YouTube or Instagram or whatever. And you guys, all our friends, you motivate us. Yes, you guys totally motivate us. As Chris says, Chris House says, the likes, they matter. The comments, they matter. Mm -hmm. right, we try really hard to at least read all of them and, and heart them to acknowledge that we've read them. AR Limitless says, what is your advice to a beginner vlogger who has just discovered his interest in photography and filmmaking? Shoot a shitload. Just keep shooting, shoot everything. Don't worry about the numbers, don't worry about the subscribers. Just create like a hundred videos. Create stuff that you like and everything else will fall in place. And always try to progress and keep pushing forward and... Learn new skills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thomas asks, how do you feel Chris's career will travel when your YouTube and creative endeavors become more successful? Will you limit yourself to maintain your career or will it become more Becky, less Chris? I'm already making one video a week alone because of Chris's schedule. So 50% of our lives are on call and there's a lot of practice building involved, you know, doing extra stuff like reaching out to other doctor's offices, building the practice. So I think right now it's at its pinnacle of busyness. Is that naive of me to say? Probably because every step of the way thus far, I always think the next step is going to be less busy and it's more busy. <laughs> <laughs> my job as an interventional radiologist is always going to be the priority of my life. So if you get too busy, I'll just probably end up making videos myself. But that doesn't mean that it's going to always be me. Even though you see us on screen, probably 50-50, the amount of work that goes in behind the scenes, it's more like 90-10%. She puts in way more work than I do on the YouTube channel. On the YouTube channel, but I think that you work very hard for our family. Thanks, son. And I appreciate that. Daniel's asking, how is it to vlog as a couple? and How do you balance it with personal time? We like vlogging as a couple because we've always had projects together. We've had a business together, home renovation together. Um, and we've kind of learned over the years how to balance going out and doing a thing and then vlogging. We used to film everything and now we only film specific things for planned videos. You kind of know where you're going with the story. It's like, okay, I need a shot of this, I need a shot of this, I need a shot of this. Okay, now the camera's away, now we enjoy each other's company, be present in the moment. Now we're gonna get into the deep, dirty relationship questions because there was a shitload. Ravi asks, how did you meet each other and fell in love? We met in high school art class. I was in grade 10, Chris was in grade 12. He was supposed to do advanced art, ended up doing grade 10 art. We ended up in the same class. Uh, got put into the dark room together to do some rhyograms. Oh, and uh, believe me, it was history after that. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. Yeah. 
Yeah, the darkroom experience wasn't nearly as scandalous as it sounds like it was. No. <laughs> oh, touching the arm. Oh, God. I'm like picking my nose over here while you're That's trying okay. to touch my arm. Uh, Martha asks, how do you manage a YouTube channel as a couple? Do you have to compromise? It's just a good time all around. I mean, usually our weekends are spent vlogging. We like that, but not our entire weekends are spent doing that. And um, we don't really have the compromise usually. No. Uh, Juan Brito says, do you find that vlogging together has improved your relationship in any way? That's an interesting question because I view it like any other projects we've taken on. So I view it as part of our relationship. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, exactly. Hi, bye. Can you, can I, can, do I have a nose goblin? No, you're good, honey. Okay. Lynn asks, okay, my question is for Becky. Which creative medium did you get into first? Graphic design, photography, videography. What drew you to it? I was first into photography. I wanted to go to school for photography. I couldn't because it was away and too expensive. So I went to school for graphic design. Quickly fell in love with graphic design and then realized I could put two and two together. And then I got into video last. You've always been very visual. Visual, yes. Yeah, it's kind of the basis for our channel too, like visuals. One for Chris from Lynn also. Um, how did you manage time in between being a doctor and learning to fly helicopter? So I learned to fly helicopters on the weekends. I took the longest <laughs> out of anybody to get a commercial like a helicopter year and license. And a half. Yeah, to get a commercial <laughs> helicopter license. But I kind of just chipped away at it in my spare time. And then one for both of you, where in the world would you like to live and why? I actually love living in Buffalo. Yeah, we're right where we are. Kyle asks, how do you take the negative and turn it into a positive? Just interested on how you both deal with adversity. Really interesting question, especially since we kind of went through a huge life change. Last year, Chris lost his job and that's how we ended up in Buffalo. If you want to learn more about that, we'll link it up here. Not so much letting it pass, but kind of dealing with it head on. Like you go through the grieving process and then, okay, now how do we move forward? Uh, I'm kind of a very like regimented logical guy and I always look at problems in, okay. A mathematical equation way? Yeah, pretty much. It's like establish the problem, what are the options, and how do you fix it and make a plan to ha make it happen. Uh, and that was a stressful time. I basically lost my job because I was a helicopter pilot and because I had a social media presence. You guys are probably gonna think like, what? But I, it's a different generation and more details in that video. We don't dwell on it now. It's like- Yeah, it's just water in the bridge. Yep. Yeah, we're happy where we are. And uh, we've had way more opportunities here than we probably ever would at home. And we have some amazing friends of Buffalo. Jess asks, any tips on being independent? I mean, living on your own after moving out from your parents. Be financially responsible. Don't live beyond your means. Save money and be smart with your finances. Gecko Gecko? Gecko Gecko? Oh, I get it. The Gecko Gecko. The gecko from Gecko. <laughs> Got the as, Gecko Gecko. As a young adult, like early 20s, did you ever wonder if you were making the correct decisions career-wise? As someone younger like myself, it kind of feels like there is a lot of pressure to make a decision. If you end up not liking it, it'll be hard to start over by the time you find out you don't really like it. I feel so bad for kids nowadays because I feel like there's so much pressure to figure out what you wanna do with life. There's truth also to the to the point where you mentioned that it's too late to turn back. I know so many people in medicine who are so unhappy. They got halfway through, they realized, oh my God, I hate my life, but I've already dedicated 10 years to this and I just need to make it happen so I can get to retirement. And that is tragic. Uh, all I can say is just, you know, reach out to people, do as much research as you can, shadow people, and that's just not applicable to medicine, but any field, I'm sure mm -hmm. there's there's ways to shadow people. Bill asks, question for Chris, do you still have your BMX skills? Do you? Obviously. No, I definitely don't. <laughs> yes. Robbie asks, how do you keep this level of friendship alive between each other? We're like literally best friends. We date, we have fun, we laugh a lot. Dude, we don't take life too serious because so it's too short to be too serious. Uh, Marshall Clark says, do you two ever experience creative differences when it comes to content or style or business direction? Yeah, we're pretty much on the same page for everything in terms of style, ideas. Chris is really open to my ideas. I'm mostly open to his ideas. Let's Unless, get a helicopter. <laughs> let's put white tile on a bedroom floor. No! Would have been terrible. Okay, terrible. next. Mark, Mark asks. Mark! 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 Mark. <laughs> What are your aspirations? What's the end goal for both of you lovely people? There is no end goal. It's continuing to progress and just feel like you're moving in a forward direction. And it's kind of cheesy to say, but like just striving for happiness. I agree. I like this question a lot. If you're not a filmmaker, what would you be? I would be either an architect, a landscape designer, or an interior designer. I like making shit. I like poop. Well, okay, so anyway, what were you gonna say? So I was gonna say- <laughs> I like poop. Did somebody say poopy? <laughs> oh, see like- This is the difference between you and me. I view my occupation anyway as part of me. I've dedicated so much of my time to make that happen. If So you can't imagine, if I said, Anything you could be in the entire world. Well then, that's the same question I was asking. If you could be anybody else, who would you be? Because it's part of me. Oh, you're so deep. Boom! Okay, next question. <laughs> uh, <coughs> okay. okay, Sebastian says french fries, or is it croquettes or croquettes? I have no idea, I can't go wrong with french fries. French fries, 100% hands down, always. One Minute Weekly asks, any home decoration slash renovation slash DIY vlogs coming up? Oh, oh, oh just, just wait. you wait. Just you wait. <laughs> Okay, 
Lavi Sharma asks, what's the one bad habit of Chris that Becky hates? When you Dutch oven me, like <laughs> reverse crop dust. It's your own fault. You're not gonna let me put any of this it's in the video. Fault. I don't think you have any like, oh, there's one bad habit that, that you do that I really dislike. What, I can't- I, I know exactly what she's gonna say. Let me, let me read okay. your line, read, okay. read your line. When you're editing the video, and you and then I tape it off like this, and my waveform goes like this, and well, then the tape is up Yeah, that too, I hate that. Your audio is impossible to edit because you, you literally talk like this, and then you go, I'm like, huh? No, my pet peeve is when we sit next to each other at the dinner table. Yeah, and I'm sitting to this side, and he eats like this. <laughs> I don't eat like that. And I'm like, that. That I'm like over here trying to eat my meal, and his elbow's like that on top of me like happen. that. And I'm like, what is All this? All right, next question. Now, what about the habit that I don't like that Becky does? Oh, um, what is it? Bat. <laughs> Bah. Pip, 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 I'd love to get one of those 24P slash F1.2 shirts. Okay, oh, so. Kenneth is an OG. Kenneth, you're an OG. If he remembers those shirts. Unless or, you went, unless back, you went and back and watched them. Yeah, okay. Here's what happened with the Respect. merch store. We were ready to launch. We crossed the border. The border agent goes, you need to shut down your business. All business. Excuse me, what? I just paid for an entire year of Shopify subscription. That's true. And I just got all of these samples from this. So anyway, we had to shut it down. So yes, we're still planning on opening a merch <laughs> store. Because you guys have been asking about LUTs and presets and shirts. Aditya says, will you guys get a dog or any pet? I love animals. Well, it's funny you should ask that. The deal was... We had an agreement. We did have an agreement. A gentleman's agreement. The deal was, Chris gets a helicopter, I get a dog. No, no, no I've it's been not looking. my responsibility. I've been okay. I didn't ask you to buy me a helicopter. I'm yelling. Sorry, I'm really passionate about this. <laughs> I've, been, uh, I've been keeping my eye on the Buffalo Pug Rescue Instagram page uh, for the right dog, but they're, I think... They're so ugly. They're, they're like the little best. aliens. They're like E.T. They're this the dogs that nobody wants, and a rescue dog is like the best dog. I agree with that. I think a rescue dog is, is ethically sound. I think we're gonna wait till we get a house. There are already enough dogs in this damn building, and there's enough piss and shit all over the place that I don't want to add to it. It's true. There's urine all over our door. But there's a really cute door. one that lives next door. Anyway. Excuse my positions in all of this video, because I'm like, huh? You know, we could have made the font bigger. That would have been an easy thing to do instead of being like this. Well, yeah, okay, f you're right. And it seems like you guys are very well educated, so do you have college degrees? Just being nosy and trying to see how you guys got to where you are now. Uh, I did undergrad in bio. You don't have to talk so fast, calm down. Just you said it. we were running out of time. We're not, I just started a new clip. We got the camera plugged in. Okay. We got time. Right. You have a bachelor of science bachelor. degree. Talk normal. I did my undergrad degree in biochemistry and behavioral neuroscience, did a joint honors there, did medical school, which is another four years, did a five-year radiology residency, did a one-year fellowship, I think that totals 14 years you have, for both of you us. You have degrees on degrees. I have a two-year diploma. I did graphic design in school, and all my experiences have been um, on the job, uh, working for people, and freelancing, so yeah. Gabriel Steele says, what is each Wait, of your- Wait, this might be the most important question. How long has my hairy ankle been out? What is your favorite food? Three. Two, one. Sushi. Chicken nuggets. Oh, I thought we were really gonna be on the same page there. Well, I do love sushi. It depends on what you, mood you're in. Yeah, that's true, but like usually chicken nuggets. Out of all the times we've gone out for food, how many times have we gone for chicken nuggets versus how many times have we gone for sushi? It's we've always gone to sushi more than chicken nuggets. Right. But so if I we're starving and we're out and we're like chicken nuggets. Even better, when you go to sushi and you get tonkatsu and it's basically it's like, like an Asian, Asian chicken nugget. Chicken nugget. <laughs> I love sushi though, I do. Okay, and finally, last but not oh, least, question. the Mindful Millennials ask, first I want to say that you guys have been inspirational to us as a couple. Oh, uh -huh. thank you. Lindsay and I fa often find that we keep each other motivated and it seems like when one person is down, the other is there to pick them up. Do you guys feel like you have had the same experience as a couple? Definitely. Mm -hmm, 100%. Or if yeah. we're both down, we have to still sort of lean on each other like a teepee. Yeah. And that's when we're like, so oh, cheesy. yeah, that was cheesy. Like, when you're both down, it sucks, but it's also like, okay, like let's, like, we're going through this together. How can we make this better? And usually it's chicken nuggets and a TV show. <laughs> True. Yeah. All right, there we go. We That's came to it. the end of it. Well, thank you for tuning in to this 50K Q&A edition of Tuxedo Time. Mm. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. We'll, we'll see, see you on, on the next, next one. one. Ugh, I don't want to get up. A little bit different from our other vlogs where you guys have watched basically all helicopter videos with me being eye on gravel. You're like, have you like ever, look, just watch her facial expressions and she looks like the most miserable human being when she's in the helicopter. She's like, I'm actually zong. Like literally, okay, I'm going to toss up a GoPro clip here. Look at my face. I look like I hate my life. I'm just like, but in the around. reality, I'm just and like, he's like, like I'm literally a corpse.